features us on their podcast sections where you can get all the things you didn't even know where you can check check out packers news and check out tickets to the games and even packer event updates at parker moles is a packers writer and contributor for diehard packer fan a great young writer with a different view of the game and brings a ton of energy and passion to his work then you've got at monty jp 231 the founder and host of the Full Monty Football Show every Sunday live at 11 a.m. Eastern, featured by Nuts and Bolts Sports on blogtalkradio.com. He works hard on Sundays so you don't have to. And follow the rest of the crew, too, at Greg Cowboys, at Lion Cuban, and at the other George Lopez. Again, that's at MontyJP231 on the Twitter. We're going to round this out with the NFC North Round Table Fellas. Starting off with at Mike Zimmer's Ears. JB is co-host of the Heart and Skull Podcast. Then we have at the Fifth Top. Julius Porter is a Detroit native Lions writer for at Detroit Sports Nation and Uncle Mike 21 Austin Fugelstad is the co-host of At Hollis Hall Brawl covering all the things you need to know about the Bears, Vikings, Lions and Packers from these fellas also special shout out to Julius Porter he's going over to Afghanistan folks he's going over to be a contractor to help set up for the soldiers, go ahead and keep him in your prayers, we're going to miss you buddy we'll be holding a spot for you when you get back we'll miss you and love you Much love, Julius. Stay safe, buddy. And as always, you can follow us on the Twitter at First and Gold Pod, myself at UPJ33, Dave is at Steak and Cheese, the Fantasy Wonder himself, Dylan at DylanBuzzV1. Email us at First and Gold Podcast at Yahoo.com with all your football and Packer questions. Give us your comments, and you just might end up making the show live. Again, that's First and Goal Podcast at Yahoo.com. We are back, and I am unmuting you now. Now, 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 now. Gee. All right. So you want me to run down those power rankings, huh? Yeah, just yeah, make just sure make that sure everybody, that everybody heard of me because I'm really pretty, pretty sure you might be muted. So my bottom two, my bottom two for those trash barrel outhouse teams that need to go away. So we need to have a thirty team league. Bengals or Redskins? Ill. Um, thirty to twenty. I have Dolphins. I have the Jets at twenty nine. I have twenty eight Giants. Twenty seven Falcons. Twenty six Cardinals. Twenty five Lions. And shout out to those Lions fans who thought they were going to take the NFC North this year. Woo! Uh, 24 Buccaneers, 23 Broncos, 22 Bears. How about Mitch Trubisky? Hey! Uh, 21 Browns, 20 Jaguars. <sighs> All right. 19 to 10, I have the Chadges at 19. I have 18, the Colts, 17, the Steelers, 16, the Panthers, 15, the Rams, 14 Titans, Tannehill's 3 and 1, folks. 13 Raiders, 12 the Cowboys, 11 Bills. My 10 to 6 is Eagles for Dylan. 9 is Texans, 8 is Vikings, 7 is Chiefs, 6 is Saints. My top 5 of the league right now that I think are the best teams, the best playing right now. Number 5 is 49ers, number 4 is the Pats. Number three is the Packers. Number two is the Seahawks. Or the number one is the Ravens. Because Lamar's going to Lamar. Well, for me. Uh, uh, whoa, whoa, they... whoa, 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 whoa. There's something <laughs> we forgot tonight, folks. we got to pick the Thursday night football game. Oh, that I couldn't tell you, but I'm taking Pittsburgh. Give me 24 to 14. Ew. I'm going with Cleveland. I think Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt have themselves a day. I think they take Pittsburgh to the woodshed.
28-25 Cleveland, though. The line is Cleveland at three at home, so it's basically a push. Yep. Yes. I said uh, I have them 24 to 14. <laughs> we have an over-under of 41 and a half for this game. Same here. I'll go over. 28-25 Cleveland. Last second field goal. My final thoughts. Hmm. Well, you know what? This is the loneliest type of week in all of football. As an NFL fan, besides the offseason, it's the bye week for the Packers. So Jay and I are going to try and get some more guests on here and get you some more really damn good content. And you know what? Um, for Fantasy Files, Dylan gave us plenty of stardom, sit studs, duds to be able to add on to your team, trade candidates. Please, folks, take all the advice you can from him. He knows what he's talking about. Jay literally has built his team off of what Dylan said almost every episode. <laughs> and it's not a joke either. It's true. And he's he's doing well. So, nope. Go ahead and uh, check out some more content for his folks in the future. More guests. And when, especially when the Packers bye week. My final thoughts, I guess I'll just go ahead. Um, I've been thinking all week about what I've been especially wrong about this season in fantasy football. So I'll, I'll fess up to those right now. I didn't think Russell Wilson was going to have a bad year, but I definitely thought he was going to have a down year compared to years past. You had Tyler Lockett as his number one option and Daryl Bevel coming in as a guy who said he wants to run, run, run the football. So I did think that Russell Wilson would have a down year compared to his previous seasons. I thought that Derek Darryl Henry Bevel was going to – disappoint all who drafted him i figured henry was going to be replaced mostly by Deion lewis at this point in the season because they would be having to come from behind so often and pass the ball and i remember saying in the off season that jordan reed and tyler eifert were going to be steals of the draft and be on plenty of championship teams this year that has not panned out either jordan reed hasn't played since i don't know week three and eifert's been spotty to say the best so I'll say that about my fantasy takes. And other than fantasy takes, guys, you were talking about um, Bears and Lions fans, which I, you know, I hate to pick on them. I hate to poke the Bears, so to speak. Pick on them. Do but it. The, the Do level it. of uh, offseason optimism was very surprising to me. I mean, not just guys who, you know, were throwing out that, uh, you know, the typical lines. It was guys who really thought that their teams were going to make a playoff push, that this was the year for the Lions, for whatever reason, despite <laughs> all their <laughs> defensive <laughs> deficiencies, you know, the guys that they signed, Snacks Harrison, blah, 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 Trey Flowers. Like, I don't know how they ever saw Overpaid. that. Yeah. And then you got the Bears, who were constantly listed in the power rankings as being like a top 10, sometimes even top five team. Based off of what? A one-game appearance in the playoffs <clears throat> last year? I mean, Mr. Trubisky has been terrible. We know this. We know that he shows up on occasion when the defense is playing well and he can use his legs. Other than that, I, I, this is exactly what you deserve, Bears and Lions fans, because you knew this was coming. Jay, how many times did you and I get told in the offseason – that we were lunatics, we were idiots by all these non NFC North or non Packers fans in the NFC North saying that the GM Gutekunst is driving the ground, Rogers is done, the moves they made is just gonna put them in the hole. And yet everything that happened that they, they said it would happen to us happened to their own teams.
the funniest thing I think about, about all that, that, really, honestly, yeah, yeah, is... It was all off-season. Off season. We, we stuck by our guns. guns. We got we called got crazy. crazy. We got called crazy by people. Even my own Packers fans. Packers people. Packers. Not just fans. By people we respect, follow, and kind of, you know, study from, learn from. But we stood our ground. We said what we said. And everything's kind of going together the way that we thought it would, the way I thought it would. The only real surprises have been, like, the early beginning of the season, the win and, the win and loss, loss I had to the had Eagles and Broncos. Broncos. I had that flip flop to end and losing to the Broncos, Broncos, beating the Eagles. Eagles. And, and, and uh, them uh, winning Don against Don the Chiefs because Patrick, Patrick Mahomes wasn't there. Because, there. because let's, let's be real, if Mahomes was there, there that game there, probably would have been a loss. loss. I expected him to lose against the Chargers. So, like, nothing really has surprised me too much. And I think that's probably part of the reason why I've been able to see a call. Either that or maybe it's just all this podcasting I do. It gives me a place to vent. But, yeah. 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 There's one extra fact I got to add about Mitch. If you don't, just give me one second. So. It came out today that John Fox said in a report that he did not want Mitch Trubisky. Him and Pace had gotten in an argument the day of draft day one that he wanted Watson or Mahomes. He wanted a guy that he could work with, his QB coach and his OC, and he wants the guys that are proven. Pace ignored his head coach at the time and went and drafted, yeah, the old turd bisky. Um, I, I, if you think about this, this sent ripple effects to the organization, guys. <clears throat> if you go ahead and draft Watson or Mahomes, you're most likely in the NFC Championship in in for the playoffs last year with Mahomes or Watson. You're most likely in there with that quarterback. So with that, Nagy never go, comes to the team. Fox is still there because they're probably going to be winning. Also, too, Fangio, he never leaves. He stays there because he's got a team he can rely on to be able, as an offense to work with. No wonder he wanted to leave. He saw this coming. And it's like... Uh, One pick rippled the whole organization apart. Well, and the moves they made to get Trubisky, the moves they made to get Khalil Mack, have now put them in a situation where they can't even draft one of these uber talented quarterbacks next season. They have nine million in cap next year because of all those moves. Nine million, so they can barely pay draft picks next year. That's it. Well, Way to go, Ryan to Pace. Worry, they don't have to worry about paying draft picks because they don't have any top draft picks. To even no, they have two. Se- they, have, they have they have two seconds. Um, yeah, but that's not that much money. That those guys are essentially pennies on the dollar. Yeah, I'm talking the first round picks are the ones that cost you guaranteed cash against the cap. No, with seconds, thirds, and fourths. It still adds up to about four million total with all the draft picks oh, added up. Oh, people, oh, trust me, they'll be restructuring oh, yeah. people and, and making it prolong and worse when it comes anyway. So, all but right, that all one right, pick right, though, right, think about it. Fox would still be there. I know, I know, I, know. I get your they point. They traded pixel final thoughts, 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 not the, the freaking endeavor into, into the next the cycle. cycle. This is my final thought. It, One it, pick that they traded away to go get your business. This is the longest final thought in the history of final thoughts. Alvin Kamara was a pick that they used to go get Mitch Turdbisky. This is, this becoming, is becoming a rabbit hole, not a final, final thought, 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 Fantasy world, I love you. Keep your heads up. If you're in a position to get in the playoffs, good for you. If not, I feel your pain, and we'll see you next season. And guys, and guys please guys, email, email us. It's first and goal podcast at yahoo.com. Yahoo.